Hi everybody, this is Faith from Creative Bug coming at you live like we do every Tuesday and Thursday. And I have a craft that is useful as well as decorative. That's what our mother would call us when we did the dishes. And that is also helps save the environment because I might as well have a table full of poison in front of me. You may know if you live in California or if you're up on your straw news that plastic straws are being banned in California. Um, you have to switch to paper straws or carry around a straw. I saw a magazine article saying, look at this collapsible straw to carry around in your purse. And I thought, have you seen what's in my purse? There's too many things already. There's like three watercolor palettes. That's Courtney Cerruti's fault and several books, which is no one's fault but my own. So this project uses plastic straws and some string to make a beautiful decorative air plant hanger. Now air plants are super fun and very strange. They're basically alien plants. I don't know how they work. And when Courtney and I went to the flower store to buy them, the woman said, oh, have you had these before? And we said, yes. And she said, have you kept them alive? And we said, no. So the key is you have to spritz them every day with water, or if you soak them, do it once a week. I thought that they needed to be soaked once a month, which is incorrect. That's too long to go without soaking. They get their nutrients from the air and the water. So spritz it once a day or soak it for 15 minutes once a week. Don't soak it for longer because then it will entirely fall apart, is what the lady said, and I believe her because she was working at a plant store. So you'll need plastic straws. I might do a fancier version with these paper straws, but plastic is preferable. You'll need um, some cotton rope. For the decorative version, I'm going to be using this DMC style embroidery floss. For the simpler version, I'm just using this cotton twine. And the snazzy version will use some beads. And I have made myself a needle of sorts out of some floral wire. This will help us thread the yarn through here. The reason why I'm not showing you how to make this needle on camera is because I put this in my mouth and your teeth are not tools and I know that my parents watch sometimes and I didn't want them yelling at me for using my teeth as tools. Um, I already have some substantial damage done by knitting needles and I have a thread dent in my tooth which apparently great tailors do because they clip threads with their teeth and if you do too many times like I have, but we're not going to get a close up on it, um, you get a little dent in your tooth. Also I can't clip threads on this side of my mouth anymore so I clip threads on this side of my mouth when I'm not using thread clippers, which is what you're supposed to use for the simple version. <laughs> We're gonna cut. Oh, and don't forget, we are live. So if you wanna write in and ask me any questions or tell me stories of terrible things you've done to your teeth in the name of craft, um, I read every single comment after the broadcast and I love hearing from you, especially if you're validating my terrible bad habits with using <laughs> your mouth as scissors. So I'm gonna cut four six inch lengths of my straw, which coincidentally is just before the fun bendy part. Also, though I was jokey about it, I am in full support of a plastic straw ban because you don't actually need straws. You just have to learn how to deal with cold lips. So I'm cutting these all the same length and then we'll need four pieces, or we'll need eight pieces, excuse me, that are half this length. So because this one is six inches, now we'll need eight pieces that are three inches. So I'm going to repeat cutting off the squiggly part and we'll cut those in half. Also, straws are one of the most zippy things you can ever imagine cutting. They like to ricochet off into a lot of directions. So if you have pets that might be tempted to eat these, um, be careful, be safe. We're pro oceans, we're pro pets at Creative Bug. You'll need two lengths of rope that are about 
um, I would say, how long is this? Maybe six feet long. I'm 5'11", and my arm span would be 5'11", so maybe five and a half feet. And we're going to tie these together in the center. And this can just be a single knot, one around the other. And this will be our bottom. And so we're going to thread two pieces of yarn, or two, two of the smaller lengths, excuse me. And I'm moistening the end of my yarn so I can slip it through. But if you want to be really speedy about it, I will show you a gross tip. <laughs> it's only gross because um, you can potentially get a mouthful of string. So insert the end in and breathe in gently. And there we have it. It comes right out. And you're threading one piece onto each leg. See that I got a little bit more. I'm not going to do that on camera anymore. That's probably disturbing. Here's where our, <laughs> our straw threader comes in handy. So you can use this like a needle and insert the end into your loop here. and pull it through. And once we have all four onto our base, we will add the second piece and tie it off. Second piece, tie it off. Second piece, tie it off. And that looks like this. I mean, you can see how the, the sucking it through goes a lot faster, right? This also is not so bad. So this is where it gets really cumbersome, but that's okay. It's supposed to be that way. And we're going to, okay. It also is a little bit mind boggling at first. It boggles both the hands and the mind. So we're going to tie these two together right here. And you would use um, the same color if you wanted to hide the thread. That'd make it a little bit more elegant. Make one knot, and then make a second. Okay, so this will form part of the base. So then we add our second small piece to this one. And we're going to tie it off here. And make sure that it's kind of in position before you pull it taut. You don't want there to be a knot. See, I kind of made the knot higher up where it's a little bit loose. You want to make sure that everything is as tightly together as possible. There we go. So see, we're building on it. We're going to have, make, make sure you remember that this is our base. So we have a top here, here. And we're just repeating this. And at this point in time, it looks kind of like a jumbled mess. That's okay. It's, it means it's working. 
These are also really fun to make as Christmas ornaments. Here we go. This is also one of those projects that makes you wish that you had like two extra fingers, at least on one hand. Okay, we just need the fourth one. So find whichever one is longer. Oh, this is only longer by about an inch. And then we'll add our final short piece. And we're gonna tie it around here. Is this making more sense now? Look at that. It's like the top of a house. Now, I bet you can guess what we're going to do with the next part. And if you guessed, thread these onto here, you win a gold star. But not one made out of plastic because that destroys the oceans. I made myself a, a longer one too. I think all projects go faster if you have the correct tools like custom teeth made straw needles. That could be a whole class. Could be a whole class, Leanna says. You're right. Oh, this is gonna be cute. You can also scale this up or down, just making sure that the short pieces are exactly half the length of the long pieces. And keep in mind, if you're using smaller air plants, you'll want smaller pieces. And if you use larger air plants, you want larger pieces, but you don't want them to be too heavy that they weigh it down. So now we have this monster. That's kind of cute, actually. And we're going to connect it all at the top. So I find it easiest to link crossing pairs. And this you'll be doing a double knot so you can really snug it up. Make it as tight as it will go. It kind of makes me feel like when you're camping and you're setting up the tent and nothing makes, like it, it all is wiggly and it doesn't snap into place until you get that final bar across and then poof, you have a place to sleep and not just something that's going to suffocate you. Chase, what did you make those straw needles out of? Lena asks, what did I make the straw needles out of? I made those out of floral wire. So our final step here is to tie, using these threads, this one down. And there we go. How perfect, right? And I'll probably keep two of these lengths of thread to tie on something, but the other two we can essentially weave in our ends. So I'm gonna keep these guys out. Oh, it might look nice too if we use like a bead or something at the top. And then we're going to use our yarn needle. Pull it back down, and once you have it through, pull it tight, 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 and you'll clip it and hide the end. And it also gives it a little bit more body. Here 
There we go. And pull it tight. And the reason why we're using air plants is because they can be gently propped inside just like that. And I love how the natural material looks against this plastic. And this is extra, the plastic is extra good because you can spritz it while it's in its holder. Now another variation that's a little bit ritzier, we're gonna use these gold straws that Courtney got. And these you'll have to be sure to take off of the holder um, when you're spritzing it because they are made of paper and we don't want your project to collapse. And I'm going to use actually the same proportions. So four that are six inches, four that are three inches. And if you, um, if you are an air plant lover yourself, please let me know. I love meeting fellow uh, plant killers. As in my mind, if you're a plant lover, you've, you've seen some things. materials requests, wondering Wait. if it would be possible to make this using the stainless steel straws and or Ooh. penne pasta. We have some <laughs> very ingenious readers who want to know, can you make this with penne pasta or stainless steel? You can do whatever you want. I would recommend um, probably the stainless steel straws, if you, if you can cut them, I don't know how you would go about doing that, but yes, sure, and that would look really great. And you'd want to use um, a thread that's a little bit thicker, a little bit hardier. Um, this is just 100% cotton, but you might want to use something that has um, like a polyester blend or like an, an unnatural material. Um, and as far as the penne pasta, I can't think of any penne that is where you'd find shapes that were twice as long as other shapes, if that makes sense. Um, because the bars, as you know, need to be half the length of, of the main one. The smaller ones need to be half the length of the longer ones. So you, they, it ended up being very tiny. And if you spritz it with water, then you get floppy noodles. So maybe not with penne pasta. But if you wanted to do it with, um, we saw some bamboo straws at the coffee shop up the street. That would look really chic. I'm going to cut these on half. I love these questions though, thank you so much. That's one of the best parts of my job is when I have these questions, when I'm doing it, I get to just try it out. And then everyone says, what are you doing with those noodles, Faith? And I say, my job okay. I'm usually a little bit nicer about it. But it is fun to get to test these things out. Okay, this one, this one's our Glamorama one. Because if you're, if you're making things out of straws, you might as well be glamorous about it. This is our, our Hollywood Regency air plant hanger out of straws. And this one we're going to be using our decorative thread and we want um, eight lengths that are about four feet long. And I'm gonna do that. Instead of cutting it each time, I'm just gonna go back and forth and back and forth matching up the ends, and once I get eight of them, then I will cut them off. Ooh, and if you have any other ideas for straw craft, please let me know because, I mean, we're not gonna have these around for much longer, so we might as well use them up and use them for something beautiful versus something vicious and dangerous. I, w I have to admit, I was a little confused and reluctant um, about the straw ban at first um, because I like straws, but I like the oceans more. So do I have eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I need one more. And this I will thread onto a bead. This is where the threader extra comes in handy because I think if you were just using um, your own breath, 
that might not be enough to get all of the strands through. And give yourself a little tail so you can make a tassel. I'll make it like four inches long. We can always trim it down. You want to make a double knot to prevent it from going through. And let's trim off the end. And this one is, this is the intense version. This is for the advanced, the intermediate straw crafter. Give you something more exciting. Could you make a giant one? Um, paper towel tubes? Leanna asks, could you make a giant one with paper towel tubes? Absolutely, I love that idea. <laughs> Apparently now at craft stores, you can get big packs of toilet paper rolls or paper towel tubes because so many people use them for crafting and it's just too hard sometimes to gather them all up. When you're changing your toilet paper roll, you're not necessarily thinking, what can I do with this? You're thinking, I need some more toilet paper. So you're gonna separate it, two pieces, and you'll thread it onto a small one. This one's a little bit different than the other way we did it. So we're gonna do a small length, then a bead, then a long length. Oh yes, we're getting beads involved. I should have used my supersized one. I can already tell this is gonna be my favorite. How great is this citron green? It's pretty great. Thank you, Leanna. Leanna agrees with me that it's pretty great. And if you have any questions for Leanna, who's moderating, go ahead and ask her. Because oh. she knows everything. Well, come on. She's the boss. You're my boss. <laughs> so going back to a small length, a bead, a long length. You're going to have to bear with me for th three more of these. So you might as well ask someone some questions. Use your teeth. Um, your teeth are not tools. Okay, well, Phil did have a question. Would it make sense to, instead of using the thread, use floral wire to make it less loosey-goosey? We had a question from Phil who... Great question, Phil. I actually... Phil's question was, would it be better to use floral wire so it's less loosey-goosey, is Leanna's paraphrasing of his question. I actually did it first with floral wire, and while it was a little less cumbersome, the results were less than satisfactory. Um, I ended up, the, the final project was a little bit more dependent on the firmness of the wire and didn't come together and support it like is, is the key for this one. Um, and I could actually see through the straws I was using. I didn't think it looked very nice. So while you could use floral wire, and it would probably make it a little bit more long lasting too if you wanted an outdoor air plant hanger. Um, but I did not like how it looked or felt. And then I found it a lot harder to thread it back into the tubes in order to hide the tails. So in the long run, it wasn't worth it for me. I, I would be happy to be a professional craft supply reviewer because I love craft supplies. And there's nothing better when you're a kid than finding someone else's craft supplies and they have a whole new pack of construction paper colors. We always had the very the very dull ones. But now I'm nostalgic for those for those packs. Like the red that's not red, it's just it's trying to be red. Okay, we're almost there. We have one more. Well, thank you everyone for your patience. I figured we could leave you with the simple one or we could, we could do the, uh, the varsity version and show you this golden one. So small, bead, long.
And then when these are all strung together, so this is done in a little bit of a different order, we will make a knot at the top. And then this gives us a really cool thick piece of yarn to hang it from, and so then the, the thread itself becomes kind of an aesthetic focal point. And now we'll use one final piece of our thread to go through. So I'm actually going to use a double length just for stability. And I'm going to start, I'm going to tie off my yarn around one of the beads. Fold it in half and knot it here. And then we're going to do a straw and then knot it. A straw and then knot it, and a straw and then knot it. Yeah, like that. Okay. And make sure you keep these in order. So I had alternated the green and the blue. Oops, I'm totally inside out. It's really fun to be confused in this way. It's like doing a puzzle. Okay, here we go. Now we're gonna knot it to this blue one. I'm doing it just to the top. And also you can fix up where all these things butt up once you're done. You can even do a spot of glue if you want to get it a little bit more, you know, symmetrical and organized. We're so close. We're like, well, we've just left second base basically. We're not in the home stretch just yet, but we are on our way. And look how crazy these, these yarn needles get when you're using them fast. They get pretty crazy. Now we're in the home stretch. We've got one last one to go. <laughs> I'm starting to sweat a little bit. We're almost there. Good thing this isn't actually baseball with real pressure. Okay, okay, okay. 
our final knot. Oh my gosh. And to hide our tails, we're going to put it back on the yarn needle, thread it through, and trim it down. Oh my gosh. And then to finish up our aesthetic theme, let's just add one more bead at the top. Oh, can we do it? Close that guy. Ta-da! How about that? I love it. So if we've learned anything today, it's that straws are evil and that you should definitely spritz your air plant every day. If not, soak it for 15 minutes, once a week, no more, no less. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.